Good morning, and welcome to worship in your home this morning. My name is Matthew Schultz. I am the pastor at Emmanuel Lutheran Church, and it is great to have you with us this morning. I especially want to welcome anybody who is worshiping with us for the first time. If you are tuning in for the first time, I hope that you're blessed by what you hear as we worship our living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, together. And I also want to send a special welcome to the church that's meeting at the Fonda household this morning. Also a warm welcome to the church that's meeting at the Mengel household today. And finally, a very warm welcome to the church meeting at the Smeeds household this morning. I hope that you are blessed by your time with us this morning. And we are going to be continuing to look at what it means for us to walk in step in our lives with the Holy Spirit, to walk in step and become the people that God has created us to be through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And the next step that we are going to be learning is the step of gentleness. And gentleness has a lot to do with how we use our power and our rights how we use our position. And so this morning as we come before our Lord for a time of confession, we have to admit that we don't always use our position, our power, or our rights for the benefit of others. All too often, we use them only to benefit ourselves. We find ourselves in an, with an opportunity to speak kind words to someone, but instead we look down at them. We have an opportunity to use our position to help raise others up, but instead we turn our backs to their plight. We have an opportunity to use our rights for the benefit of our neighbor to show the love of God, the grace of God, to them. But instead, we ask that people only honor our rights, thinking only of ourselves. And so this morning, take a moment to think of those times when you have used your position, your power, or your rights not to benefit others, but to build yourself up instead. And bring those before your Lord and lay them at the foot of the cross this morning. Maybe the most amazing thing about God is that He, even though He's all-powerful, in Jesus, He emptied Himself so that He could be born as one of us. He emptied Himself of all of His rights in Jesus. And in Jesus, He even emptied Himself of the power over death so that he could die for us. Jesus did not use his position to lord it over us. Jesus used his position to set us free. He gave up his rights so that we would have the right to be called children of God, so that we could be forgiven. And that's what you are. You are forgiven in God's power. He took away all of your sin and gave you his perfection so that you could be one of his children, knowing that you are loved. I hope and pray that that is a message that builds you up this morning, reminding you how much God loves you and that your sins are truly forgiven through Christ. 
This morning in our readings, we are going to be focused on what it means for us to be gentle. Uh, this idea of gentleness. And so the first reading comes to us from James chapter 3, where he talks about how gentleness, being gentle with others, is part of the wisdom of God, a heavenly wisdom, an otherworldly wisdom. Do, you, do any of you have wisdom and insight? Show this by living the right way with the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you are bitterly jealous and filled with self-centered ambition, don't brag. Don't say that you are wise when it isn't true. That kind of wisdom doesn't come from above. It belongs to this world. It is self-centered and demonic. Wherever there is jealousy and rivalry, there is disorder and every kind of evil. However, the wisdom that comes from above is first of all pure. Then it is peaceful, gentle, obedient, filled with mercy and good deeds, impartial and sincere. A harvest that has God's approval comes from the peace planted by peacemakers. In our second reading this morning, we hear Jesus giving us a very, very stark and real example of what God means when he uses the word gentle. Jesus said, You have heard it, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you not to oppose an evil person. If someone slaps you on your right cheek, turn your other cheek to him as well. If someone wants to sue you in order to take your shirt, let him have your coat too. If someone forces you to go one mile, go two miles with him. Give to everyone who asks you for something. Don't turn anyone away who wants to borrow something from you. This is the word of the Lord. And this morning, we prepare our hearts by coming to our Lord in prayer. So if you would pray with me just a moment. <clears throat> Gracious God, you are indeed gentle. And we pray that this morning we would hear that word, that we would be led by your spirit of gentleness, so that we would also show the world what it means to be led by the Spirit. Lord, let this word, this message, live in our hearts so that it can live in our lives. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, this morning I'm going to do something a little bit different, and I hope you don't mind. Every week, uh, I still do write an actual sermon, even though uh, for these services, I don't usually use them. Uh, I, I don't read them. Uh, I, we give those ser sermons out to people who, who can't watch uh, on, on, on uh, uh, Facebook or they don't have the technology to do that. And so we send out the hard copy of the message. Well, sometimes the written word, what I write, <laughs> I feel like it's better than what I say. This morning is one of those times. And so I would like to, to share this message with you as it is written. And so I'm asking that you just listen. There aren't going to be any pictures. There's not going to be any distraction. I just want you to listen to the words this morning. Seven by seven. Seven feet wide by seven feet long, by seven feet tall. That's smaller than the average bathroom in America. It's the size of a, of a walk-in closet. Now just imagine, imagine that that closet, that closet is your bedroom, your living room, your kitchen, and yes, even your bathroom. 
Imagine if you were forced to live in that seven by seven room and only be taken out to do hard labor, breaking rocks in the hot sun. Can you even imagine that? But I want you to imagine one more thing. That seven by seven room, that is your life for 27 years. Nelson Mandela didn't have to imagine that. He lived it. Nelson Mandela was imprisoned on illegal charges on August, in August of 1962. He didn't take another breath of free air for 27 years. Held captive in the system of white apartheid in South Africa. 27 years of illegal imprisonment, 27 years of unjust treatment at the hands of his government, 27 years of seven by seven. But finally, in 1990, after growing international pressure, the South African government set Nelson Mandela free. He walked out of prison with over 100,000 people walking behind him and his wife, Winnie. If you want to look up the picture, it's amazing. And many of those people, many of those followers thought, finally, the black South Africans have their leader. Finally, after all the years of oppression and hatred, they were going to have the opportunity to rise up. Finally, finally, they would get their revenge for all the years of injustice. And then in 1994, Nelson Mandela was elected president. So now, now he had the power. Now he could use the power of the government to get back at those who had mistreated him and the people of black South Africa. Now, now they could seek justice for all of the injustice that they have ha had had to face. But that wasn't Nelson Mandela's plan. Others pushed him to use his power to get back at his enemies. Citizens begged Mandela to wield his power to exact punishment on their oppressors, but he didn't. He never did. Instead, Nelson Mandela did something that no one expected. He was gentle. If it's hard to imagine living in a seven by seven cell for 27 years, it's almost impossible to imagine being given all of the power, all of the ability to exact revenge on those who had hurt you, on those who had illegally imprisoned you, on those who looked down on you just because of the color of your skin, but then not use that power. But that's exactly what Nelson Mandela did. He had all the power to exact revenge. He was well within his rights as the president of South Africa to make an example of those who had oppressed him and the other black South Africans, but he didn't. He never did. Having all the power, being within your rights to seek revenge, to get something back, to seek justice the way you see it, but not using those po that power or those rights. That is exactly the meaning of gentleness. That's the meaning of gentleness that we come to today as we continue to learn what it means to be in step with the Holy Spirit. As we heard in our reading from James, but the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle. Now, when we think of gentle, we might think of someone saying a kind word or, or maybe, maybe giving us a warm hug. We might even think of, of, a, of a 
dishwasher deter, uh, dishwashing detergent commercial that says it's tough on grease but gentle enough for your skin. But that's not what God has in mind when he calls on us to be gentle. That's not what Jesus means when he says to you and me, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle. God's je definition of gentle, Jesus' definition, and our definition is something different. It's otherworldly. Being gentle means having all the power, having the right to do something, but not doing it. That's what God means when he calls on us to be gentle. That's what Jesus is telling us to do as we learn from him. Because that is who they are. That's who God is. He is gentle. Now, God could have punished us for all the, time, all the things that we had done. God could have been strict with us in seeking retribution for what we had cost him and what we had taken from him. He has the power. He is all powerful after all. God could have demanded repayment and asserted his right as our creator, but he didn't. And so could have Jesus. Jesus could have wiped out the Roman soldiers who were beating him on that Good Friday. He could have raised an army to fight against the Jewish religious powers that mistreated him and misused his words. He also has the power. He is God after all. He could have demanded that everyone recognize his rights as God. But he didn't. Instead, God sent his son to serve in gentleness. Instead, Jesus went to the cross in gentleness, having all the power, but not using it. Jesus emptied himself of his rights as God and came as the one who would serve. He emptied himself of all of his glory and came and sought as the one who would die in our place. Instead of retribution, Jesus sought reconciliation. Instead of fomenting a rebellion, Jesus preached forgiveness. God was gentle with us. He is gentle with us. Jesus was gentle and he is gentle, having all the power, all the rights, but not using them for revenge, but using them for reconciliation. Reconciliation with you. Having the power and not using it. Overlooking the slights, big and small. Living out forgiveness in everything that they do. We expect this from God, don't we? In fact, we talk about it all the time. We talk about it so much that maybe, maybe it's kind of lost its meaning. Maybe it's gotten a little bit old. A little unremarkable. Because that's just what God does. That's, that's why I go to church. That's why I listen to these messages. Because I want to hear that God, God overlooks all of that. But to see gentleness put into practice in our world, to see someone who, has lost, who lost so much be guided by a spirit of gentleness, like Nelson Mandela, it's, it's almost unimaginable, especially in our world today. Respond to someone with gentleness when we have the right to do something else? <laughs> holding, holding power but not using it against our enemies? Holding power but not using it against those who have hurt us? Holding power but not using it against those who stand in the way of getting what we want? Unthinkable. Unimaginable. I mean, right now, ask people to wear a mask and they assert their rights instead of just thinking about their neighbor. See, injustice in our world, on our streets, in our justice system, 
an answer with more injustice and violence. I mean, we see people use power, their power to abuse others. We see people use their power and their position to attack their political opponents. We see people, day after day, assert their right to do whatever they want, to whoever they want, whenever they want, regardless of what happens to the person they're doing it to. Our world is guided by a very different spirit. Anything but the spirit of gentleness. So what made it possible for Jesus? What made it possible for Nelson Mandela to be given power but not use it for revenge? What was it that they knew that gave them the real strength to be and lead with gentleness? The same thing that gives you and I that power. It's the Holy Spirit. Jesus was guided by the Holy Spirit in everything that he did and everything that he said. He was guided in gentleness. And Nelson Mandela was guided by that same Spirit, the Spirit of God in him. Many people didn't, don't know this. But before Nelson Mandela was president, before he was a prisoner, he was a parishioner sitting in the pews of a small Methodist church in South Africa. And he was a pupil, a student at a Methodist school learning about Jesus, learning from Jesus, learning to be guided by the Holy Spirit, learning gentleness. So when the time came, Nelson Mandela was ready. He was prepared. He was being guided by the same spirit that had given him peace in prison. He was being guided by the same spirit that gave him joy in the midst of his suffering. He was being guided by the same spirit that gave him patience with his captors and his situation. His amazing, unimaginable grace and gentleness came from walking in step with the Holy Spirit. And his gentle spirit overcame the ugliness of apartheid in his country. His gentle gentle spirit overcame and changed the face of his country. His gentle spirit changed the lives of millions of people. And it is that same spirit, that same unimaginably gentle spirit who guided Jesus, who guided Nelson Mandela, who is guiding you, guiding you to learn from Jesus to be gentle to have rights, to have the power without demanding others bow to them, but instead acting out of love for your neighbor. That's what Jesus is actually talking about in the gospel lesson for today. He's talking about if someone steals from you, right? If someone steals from you, you have the right to seek retribution. You have the right to to prosecute them. You have the power to get revenge. But if you want to walk in the way that changes the world, that changes lives, if you want to walk in the way that changes marriages and changes homes and changes communities, if you want to walk in the way that raised millions of people out of racial inequality, if you want to walk in the way that restores relationships instead of destroying them, you will walk in gentleness, having the power to seek revenge, but being gentle enough to lay aside your power and humbly serve your neighbor. Imagine what would happen if we, the three churches, just our three churches, about a thousand people contained in those three churches. What if we three churches here in Schenectady walked with the Spirit in this kind of gentleness? What, what would happen? I mean, imagine what our schools would look like if our students were gentle to one another. No more tears from kids being bullied. No more fights in the halls. No more suicides notes found too late. All because we're being gentle. And what if every marriage in the church was marked with gentleness? 
No more harsh words. No more nights of fighting and cold resentment. No more trying to win the argument at the expense of the other person, at the expense of the relationship. And what if we walked in gentleness against injustice in our world? How many more people would be saved from inequality? How many more in our community would know the fullness of being accepted regardless of where they come from or what they look like? What if? What if gentleness was our guide? What if gentleness was your guide? What would your home, your relationships, your work, your community, your country, and your world look like? It might look a lot more like a world we want to live in. Nelson Mandela walked free from the 7x7 cell in 1990. But that wasn't the only prison he walked free from. Recalling that day, Nelson Mandela said this, As I walked out the door toward the gate that would lead to my freedom, I knew if I didn't leave my bitterness and hatred behind, I would still be in prison leaving the bitterness, the selfishness, the revenge and the retribution behind, guided by the spirit of gentleness, Nelson Mandela walked free. Completely free. Walked in step with the spirit. Let us walk in that same complete freedom. Let us walk in step with the Holy Spirit. Let us walk in the way that changes lives and changes the world. Let us walk in gentleness. Amen. In our prayers today, we do pray for all those who are still being treated unjustly not only in our country, but also the world around us, including our brothers and sisters in Christ who are being persecuted. We pray that we would be the ones who would bring justice in our communities, in our relationships, that we would be people of gentleness. We also pray that that same gentleness would be in our homes and that our homes and our community would be transformed. And we pray for our country that our leaders, our leaders would maybe, just maybe, learn from Jesus. We pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we stand in awe at the fact that you, you have the power and the right to be angry with us. And yet you're not. Instead, instead, you put aside your power and sent your son to die for us. You put aside your rights for our benefit. Lord, give us that same servant mindset. Give us that same desire to walk in gentleness. Because it is gentleness that changes hearts and changes minds and changes the world. Lord, we ask that you would be with all those who are being treated unfairly. Whether it's in their home because of abuse. Whether it's in their workplace because of sexism. Whether it's in, their, whether it's in, 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 their, in the country because of racism. Lord, wherever someone is being treated unfairly. Lord, I ask and I pray, I pray that you would give them a spirit of gentleness so that they would change the hearts and the lives of those around them. Give them the strength to, like Nelson Mandela, change hearts and minds with love 
not with anger, not with retaliation, but with love and grace. We ask, those who are, we ask that you would also protect those who are being abused and are in danger, those who are being persecuted, our brothers and sisters in Christ who do live in places where if they say your name, they die. Lord, we ask that you would keep them safe, their families safe. Keep those who aren't safe at home. Lord, we ask that you would keep them safe as well. Lord, we ask that you would bring peace and bring it quickly. Bring an end to the violence, bring an end to the injustice. Lord, we also pray that you would be with our leaders in our country. Lord, we do not see a lot of gentleness in our leaders. Teach them. Lead them. Guide them. Help us to lead them. Give us the strength to stand for what is right, regardless of what party we stand with. Let us see that we are bigger, we are part of a bigger kingdom than red or blue. Help us to be people who walk in gentleness, regardless of who's in power or who's running or what someone says. Help us be servants, as Christ was our servant. In his name we pray. Amen. And every week we do have the opportunity to respond to God's grace and his mercy in our lives with our gifts and our offerings. And this week I want to share a quick story with you. You might have read it on the email if you didn't. So uh, last week Pastor Patrick gets a, a buzz at the door. And there's a mother and a daughter standing he can tell immediately that they're Muslim by what they're wearing. And so he thinks he's going to be helping them. But instead, the mother says, I met one of your parishioners. She told me about what you're doing, how you're helping the community. And my daughter, my daughter got some money for her birthday and she wants to give some of it to you. And she reached into her pocket, the daughter reached into her pocket and gave him a crumpled up $5 bill. What we do matters, and it is making a difference, and you are making that difference. It's your support of these ministries that makes that interaction happen. So thank you, and we appreciate your continued support. If you call Emmanuel your church home, we ask that you would continue to support faithfully the ministry that we have. If Emmanuel is not your church home, we ask that you would support a ministry near you or the ministry that you're a part of so that they can continue to bring the gospel that changes hearts and changes lives. Thank you for your support. And as we go this, this day, we go with God's blessing upon us. And so may the love of God, your Father, go above you to watch over you, beside you to befriend you, behind you to encourage you, before you to guide you, beneath you to make your footsteps firm, and within you to give you his peace and his gentleness. Amen. And a couple of quick ones uh, before you go this morning. Again, we're making a difference. You're making a difference. If you'd like to give directly to families in need, please continue to support the Three Church Fund. Every dollar that is given goes to a family who is in need right now due to losing a job uh, and falling on hard times because of COVID. And so uh, if you would like to continue to support that, we truly appreciate that. Also, there are outdoor worships. the outdoor worship service is happening every single Sunday, 10 a.m., right there at, uh, at uh, Trinity Lutheran Church in their parking lot. Uh, you have a lot of distance, a lot of space that you can uh, put between you and others so you can be safe, but you can also be with the family of God in person and, and, and worship God in person uh, there every week. So uh, if you'd like to join with them, 10 a.m. every Sunday. Another opportunity is uh, in-person worship at Zion every week. Uh, it happens at 6.30. That's a typo. I apologize. It's 6.30 p.m., not 6. Um, and uh, it 
if, if you would please call or email, let us know that you're going to be there with us uh, that week so that we can so that we can have uh, enough communion, uh, uh, individually wrapped communion sets uh, there for you, but also so that we can have enough seats uh, positioned safely. Um, it just helps us make sure that everyone is safe, but we all still get to come together and worship. And so if you'd like to be a part of that, uh, we would love to see you there on Thursday evenings at 6.30 p.m. If you have any pastoral care concerns, something going on in your life or in the life of a neighbor, and you would like to uh, to bring the church uh, around you or around your family or around a family close to you, uh, we ask that you just go ahead and call Pastor Singh. If someone you know or you need uh, uh, a uh, some financial assistance, please call Pastor Singh. He is there for you, and uh, we are there for you. And also, if there are any other needs that you have, if you have any other questions about the ministry at Emmanuel, if you have any questions about uh, reopening, if you have any questions about uh, uh, what's happening, uh, how we're working together as three churches, or or especially if you uh, have any questions about your faith, anything that you heard today, and you say, I want to learn more about that, please give me a call. I would love to hear from you. Uh, that is my cell phone number. It is always on. It's always there. And that's my personal email. So you can reach out to me. And with that, if you, uh, we, we really appreciate uh, being with you today. I hope and pray that this little bit of a different service wasn't too different. And I hope that you heard the message this morning. Um, and I do hope that uh, we go out this week and we walk in gentleness. So we, we can set people free, like Nelson Mandela, like Jesus, so that we can show the difference that it makes to be a follower of Jesus every day. I hope and pray that you do that. And I hope and pray that you have a great week and we'll see you again next week.